Hello everyone, here we are with another video in our series of recordings, our expert voices about energy opportunities in Medfield. Today, I'm really happy to have Lauren Bauman from New Ecology. She's a vice president there. She's with us today. Lauren, could you uh, share with us why Medfield Energy Committee thinks that you're one of the expert voices we should hear from? New Ecology is a approximately 20 year old mission driven nonprofit uh, based here in Boston um, that works on promoting sustainable development at the community level. And one of the primary ways that we do that is by working directly with developers, owners, architects, engineers who are um, developing mostly residential projects. Um, we also have a really strong focus within our organization on affordable housing. So we're very, very familiar working with developers and owners to implement energy efficiency, sustainability, resilience on projects that uh, have affordable housing components as well, which often can make things challenging from a budgeting perspective. Those tend to be projects um, that, are, that are challenging in terms of resource availability. And so uh, we've really honed our skills over the last 20 years in providing very practical uh, technical assistance to these teams to help them achieve high performance buildings within the context of budget constraints. Well, that's great. And I know you've been working with the Medfield Energy Committee for a while on the Medfield State Hospital project. So what are your overall impressions of the project and opportunities and obstacles you see? It's an incredibly exciting project, um, you know, for, for both the town of Medfield as well as for the state in general. Um, and, and it's one I know that a lot of folks in Medfield have been working really hard to, to get to this point for many, many, many years. Um, it, it's also one I think is going to be happening at a really interesting time right now in, in state level development around energy efficiency and sustainability and resilience. Um, there's a lot of really exciting things happening around the state at, at both the state and the local level um, to, to push these projects towards higher performance, to have them really contribute towards meeting the state's goals around carbon neutrality um, and, and being a part of the solution to getting the state to where it needs to be. And existing buildings are a really critical component of that. Um, you know, it, it's fantastic and very achievable to, to design and build very high performance buildings on the new construction side and we're working with many of the developers that Medfield is considering as part of the response for this RFP on passive house type projects um, all over the state with with those developers um, so so that's really doable I think one of the bigger challenges for this project is going to be the historic buildings um, you know those those buildings obviously are going to be very dependent on historic um, tax credits and so really working to make sure that we're maximizing the energy efficiency potential in those buildings while also meeting the goals around historic preservation is gonna be a really important theme of this project and um, definitely a harder hurdle than building a high performance new construction building, but one that's really critical to the state uh, and the town really achieving a high performance site in general because existing buildings are such a big part of this redevelopment. Uh, and it's it's one that we've it's a it's a thorny challenge, but it's one that we've seen again this this list of developers that you're currently considering take on um, in in a bunch of different circumstances over the last five to ten years. And so you know we've worked with um, some of those specific developers like the Beacons, the Winds, the Trinities on projects where they have been implementing adaptive reuse of historic buildings and achieving those goals and getting you know state and federal tax credits on the historic side while also meeting pretty aggressive energy performance and sustainability goals. So they're not mutually exclusive goals, um, but they are ones that you need to be very conscious of in the beginning of the design process and make sure that you're setting the project up to be meeting those, those goals simultaneously. Excellent. Do you have any um, other examples that you want to share with us or maybe some words of wisdom as uh, for our project? Sure. Yeah. So I think, you know, just to, to go back to what I was saying before about some of the historic adaptive reuse projects we've worked on with these developers over the last 10 years or so, um, you know, there there's examples of, of projects that are pretty similar, actually, to this. Um, we, we worked with the Beacon team uh, just about 10 years ago. So it was a while ago um, to redevelop the Ames Shovel Works site in um, 
that was in Easton, Massachusetts. So, you know, a pretty similar community uh, in a lot of ways. And that, that project was able to get to a gold level certification under the lead rating systems and achieve some pretty aggressive um, performance improvements versus the sort of baseline uh, while using historic and state federal uh, historic tax credits. And, and um, you know, we've also worked with the Beacon team on a project in uh, Sharon, which was the adaptive reuse of an old school building that also had tax credits on both the historic as well as the low income side of things. Um, so some of these projects are pretty complex mixes of, um, you know, different types of subsidies and resources that are really important to getting the project done and getting it funded. Um, but a lot of these developers are super expert at figuring out how to bring all those things together uh, and make sure that the the site is going to meet the the energy, the historic goals within the budget constraints. Um, you know, we've worked with the wind team on some adaptive reuses of uh, mill buildings that have uh, achieved high performance. And, um, you know, the building science component of that is really important. Uh, and these teams understand that. So they bring expertise on to be able to evaluate the buildings and make sure that we're making good decisions about the energy efficiency measures that are being deployed and that those measures are going to result in buildings that will be durable over the long term. Uh, in terms of a project we haven't specifically worked on, but I'm aware of, uh, I'm actually in the process right now of evaluating session proposals for the um, NESI conference, which is the New England Sustainable Development uh, Association, um, I'm sorry, Sustainable Energy Association's conference that's going to be in May. And one of the proposals is actually from a team that is doing a historic rehab of a firehouse and an office building in Fitchburg. Um, and that project, I think, is moving towards construction at this point, um, but they've designed it to meet passive house certification, to use historic and, and st historic state and federal tax credits, as well as low income housing tax credits. And so that's a project that's going to be affordable, it's going to be historic, and it's going to be passive. Uh, and it also is focused, the team very much focused on uh, low embodied carbon materials. So that's another really important concept, making sure that we're not carbon loading these buildings through the materials that we're using to retrofit them. And so this team was really focused on getting to those really high levels of operational performance uh, while still minimizing the carbon impact of the materials that they were choosing. So this is a fantastically exciting project uh, and I think really shows uh, the direction that things are moving in terms of how, how the market is shifting to really have higher expectations around um, performance in these historic adaptive reuse renovation type projects. Would you have any um, reservations or about asking developers to be aggressive in this on this front? like towards low EUIs? No, I mean, I think at, at this point, you know, many of our communities in Massachusetts have adopted the stretch code. Um, so it, it's shown sort of a universal uh, appreciation for the fact that this is very important, um, that we, we need to be moving these buildings towards higher performance in order to meet our state energy and, and carbon goals. Um, and, and many of the developers that are on your list actually tout themselves like this is this is the feather in their cap, right? You know, if, they, if you look at their websites, they very specifically indicate that they are an experienced and successful successful team at, at implementing uh, high performance buildings, sustainable buildings, resilient buildings. Um, so, so I know that there are many developers on that list who are going to see this information, feel very comfortable with it, and, and actually be able to use it in their favor as they put together their responses uh, to really differentiate themselves as, as a team that has this expertise and capacity, as well as all the other baseline capacities and functionalities that you're looking for. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Appreciate your, your help with uh, our projects and the Energy Committee. Oh, my pleasure. And, and please reach out if you have any other questions or would like to talk about it more.